What should you know before traveling to Copenhagen? That's the topic for today's episode on Travel Talk with Martin. And let's dive directly into it with some facts about Copenhagen, because Copenhagen is the capital in Denmark. And it is part of a greater Øresund area, which means that you have a close tie to the neighboring city of Malmö, which is actually in Sweden. And Copenhagen has around 1.3 million inhabitants in the greater Copenhagen. In the entire inner city, we are not above a million. But well, most citizens from Copenhagen come to the inner city once in a while, so there are quite a lot of people in there. But it is still one of the most spacious city per capita in Europe. And it can trace its history all the way back to it was small settlements along well the stretch of land that is Copenhagen today. But the more modern and city like Copenhagen, it can trace its roots back to around the 12th century. So what should you know? Let's just cover the big topics before we dive down into each topic. First topic we're going to be covering is getting around Copenhagen. Because when you're in Copenhagen, you want to get around and you want to move from A to B. That's why we're going to down to how do you get around in Copenhagen. The second topic is accommodation, because where should you live, where should you sleep, how much does it cost, what is the prices in Copenhagen. And once you have a safe place to sleep, you of course need something to eat and drink. So what is there in Copenhagen? What should you try while you're in Copenhagen? What are the specialties in Copenhagen? And once you have those basic needs filled with sleeping and eating and drinking, you also need something to do. So what is there to do in Copenhagen? That is of course our fourth point. And then we end up on Danish culture, because when you're traveling to a country, you want to at least respect their culture. You don't want to say, oh, I'm coming to Denmark, but they have to adapt to my culture. And I might have some tips and tricks for making it much easier and a little cheaper for you to travel in Denmark. Let's start with getting around in Copenhagen. Copenhagen has a great public transport system. And there are several aspects of this public transport system and there are several aspects of getting around because it's also a great bicycling city. But when you're a tourist, oh, you, I don't have any bicycle. Well, then rent a bike. In Copenhagen, there are several e-bikes to rent just from your phone through an app. Uber has some, Lime has some, there are even some ordinary bikes from uh, Donkey Republic. So there are several options to choose from. And if you have a favorite app, you can use probably use that. And I do recommend that you study Danish bicycle culture before you venture out into it. So look at how they're doing it. Because the other day when I was in Copenhagen, a group of tourists, they were walking on the bicycle path. But there was not a clear separation. Of course, if you're Dane and you're used to it, you know this is the separation. But it was not that clear. And there was a red light for the bicycles just around the corner. And when they get a green light, they are coming fast. Some of them are e-bikes, some of them are racing bikes, some of them are just Copenhagen bicyclists. That comes really fast, so you just have to move out of the way. And you could just hear the angry ringing of the bells as these tourists were hurrying in on the sidewalk. And that you have to be careful with. But once you have studied it, it's actually quite simple because it's mostly the same rules as it is for cars in Denmark. They just have their own dedicated path, their own bicycle lanes. They are usually separated by a curve. But more than that, you don't have to use a bike. If you use the sidewalk, Copenhagen is so easy to walk around in. When I'm in there, I usually just walk from A to B to C to D. I don't really use that much public transport unless I have to go a further distance. But in center of Copenhagen, you can walk around. So if you don't want to take the bike, you can walk around. But then there are the public transport system. The public transport system is divided into the metro, the bus, the S train. I will get back to that. And that is the most major. But we also have harbor buses, which are ships in the harbor. We call them buses, but they are actually just a boat. And they play well together because you have the same ticket for all transports. And you have the metro system, which goes below ground in the center of Copenhagen. But once you get outside of the center of Copenhagen, there are actually some tracks above ground, which means that you have a great view when you are driving along the Amer Beach or when you are driving along the Ørsted. And that is actually quite great because 
they drive with two to five minutes intervals. You don't have to wait. They are driving all hours of the day. So if you can use the metro, I highly recommend it because it's not limited by traffic. The buses, they sometimes get stuck in traffic. So you're a bit limited there, but not as much as you would think. And you can actually use the buses to get around most of Copenhagen in a proper speed. So if you are going a longer distance, there are no metro, take the bus or the S train. The S train is, it's a big train just made in like a oversized metro, let's call it that, that drives above ground. It, it is really meant to support the suburbs of Copenhagen, but you can actually get out to some great areas and I will cover much more of them on my YouTube channel. So make sure you check it out and head over there and subscribe. So you can see where you should explore. Mainly you can use bus trains and metros to get around all of Copenhagen without problems. And if you're in for a bit of a healthy part of travel, I recommend that you use a bike because it is very simple. Once you just have looked over the, how do the Danes do it? Oh, right, they do it this way, then I can fit in. So let's move on to where you should stay in Copenhagen because you need a roof over your head, but there are several options. And if I just take the cheapest options on hotels.com, I get it to 390 Danish crowns. And that is roughly around 53 euros and 57 US dollars. And what do you get for this low amount of money per night? Well, you get a capsule in a central located Copenhagen hotel. And if you want an entire room, you have to double that price. And that is roughly the cheapest accommodations according to hotels.com at the time of recording in Copenhagen. So yeah, it's not the cheapest city. I have lived cheaper in other cities, but it's payable if you have a medium income in most European countries. And we also have other types of accommodation such as on hostels, they have a joint sleeping hall. I don't want to do that. I think it's a bit, ugh. I want something where I can close. I can do capsules because I can close at all. I cannot do bunk beds with strange people. But what should you expect when you travel to Copenhagen in the sense of a proper accommodation? You should expect roughly around 75 to 100 euros and the same in US dollars roughly to get a proper accommodation. It is not five stars because well, it's going to be more expensive, but it is passable overnight stay because it's, you just have to sleep there. And Copenhagen is one of the most expensive cities to be on vacation and to live in, in the entire European Union. So of course the hotels are going to be that expensive, but for around 75 to 100 euros, US dollars, you can get a proper accommodation and usually you can get it with breakfast. And we just take the most expensive one on hotels.com for two adults. That is roughly 6,000 Danish crowns, which is amounts to roughly a thousand dollars and a thousand euros in rough calculations. I know it's not the same exchange rate, but it is a rough calculation. And what do you get for that amount of money? You get a superior apartment with five sleeping rooms and it actually looks quite nice, but I don't want to spend that amount. Of course, if I can get five, 10 people in there, I would spend that amount of money, but the price goes up the more people you are in that room. So they figured that one out smartly. But that is the most expensive one on hotels.com. But I know there are more expensive ones because there are some five star hotels, which, well, you have to book them directly. Let's just say it like that. And before I dive too much into where you should get a roof over your head, let me just say that I use hotels.com and this is not sponsored in any way. I just use hotels.com or booking.com because I can find perfectly good hotels to a acceptable price. And I also use it when I'm traveling because I can book well, a hotel at the same day. I can find a free room the same day in the city I end up in when I travel around by train. But let's move on to food and drink. 
When you're in Copenhagen, you of course want something to eat and drink, and you might not want to eat at the hotel all the time. I usually take my breakfast at the hotel and then I go out into the city. And there are some places I would like to recommend to you. First of all, when you're in Denmark, you need to well, taste Danish smørbrød. And Danish smørbrød, what is that? That is an open-faced sandwich on a rye bread. It is traditionally in Denmark we eat it to more formal gatherings or more gatherings with the elderly. It is also used for lunch boxes, but it is not real smørbrød. It is the budget edition with uh, rye bread with something on it, whereas smørbrød is an actual open-faced sandwich. And where can you get that? Well, you can get that in the Tivoli Food Hall, not sponsored. There are a, a shop that sells it there. And that is where I would recommend that you go because it's actually quite centrally located and it's easy to find. But if you want street food when you're in Copenhagen, there are several places that has street food. I warmly recommend that you go out to Reften. The Reften is part of the old Refshale Island with which is an old part of a shipyard and it shows there are still the big halls and you can still feel that it is an industrial area but there's a great street food market out there with some great options and if you're out there with your family you can choose one can choose this another can choose this and then you can sit at the same place and eat it and i do love the atmosphere out there and in the summertime there is also great outdoor benches if it's a rainy cold day i don't recommend that you go out there but as long as it is a sunny great day go out there and get some great food but you might want something a little more traditional then i recommend the cafe rapis Heo, which is located in christianshavn uh, it is mostly a lunch restaurant, they have the smørbrød open face sandwich also, but they also have other traditional Danish small dishes, and it is a kind of a special atmosphere. It is like going home to a Danish grandma and eating there. And the host, he is <laughs> he's something for himself. He walks around in his own pace, and I love that pace because he doesn't end a thing. Last time I was there, it took me half an hour to get the bill, but it's part of the atmosphere, it's part of the experience of being there. So don't get irritated when he doesn't spot you. Instead, enjoy the atmosphere and enjoy the type of people that gets there, because you see uh, someone in suit and tie sitting there eating their lunch. You also see the lonely man on the corner coming in, getting his lunch. So you get so many different people in there, and you have at the core that is, well, like an old Danish grandma. And that is a very special atmosphere. And this is the last thing I would recommend that you do, that you don't eat on store. It is a tourist trap to eat there. Get off into the side street, to the smaller cafes, to the smaller restaurants. It is there you will find something more authentic. Of course, you will also find the hipster cafes with burgers in all sorts of shapes, but burgers are not Danish traditional food, no matter what people tell you. And just around the corner from Nørreport, we have the Trollhallerne. The Trollhallerne is a big food market. It's a modern food market and the inspiration from all over the world, but there are also some traditional Danish things. So keep your eyes with you and there is a Smørbrød's shop out there that is great, so try it. But when I walk around in Copenhagen, I find it actually quite difficult to get traditional Danish food. And that's... I don't mind it because I don't think traditional Danish food is that good. But of course, when in Rome, do with the Romans and you might want to try traditional Danish food. And that is Smørbrød or Café Rappes Have is great for that. And let's move on. While you're in Copenhagen, you don't want to just sit in your hotel room and looking out into the empty street or the busy street. You want to get out there, you want to explore the city that much. <laughs> Why travel to Copenhagen if not to explore the city? And I can warmly recommend that you visit the Tivoli Garden, the oldest still functioning amusement park in Europe. And I actually think it's the oldest still functioning in the world. 
with the oldest wooden roller coaster in the world, which has manual brakes. And when I say manual brakes, it's because there is someone sitting there to control the brakes. And I have found it nowhere else like that. The other one we had in Denmark that was like that was in Bakken. And it has gone over to automatic brakes. So yeah, it is the oldest one of its kind, the one in Tivoli. But you should also visit Nyhavn, the atmosphere in Nyhavn. Walk down Nyhavn, out to Lange Linje. Because it is a special atmosphere and it is part of the Copenhagen experience. And or, when you're a tourist, you should see those some of those tourist sites. But you also want more, something more out of it than just seeing the tourist sites. And I can warmly recommend that you visit something like the Copenhagen Workers Museum. I will link to my YouTube video on that in the description. It is a great experience to see how not only Danish Workers Union has developed over the years, but also how the Danish work culture, as well as the industrialization up to the modern era has developed throughout time. And if you want a tip for free experience, then on Wednesdays, the Copenhagen Museum, which is the local city museum, has free admission. The Torvaldsens Museum, which is the museum devoted to the famous sculpture Battle Torvaldsen, it has free admissions and the Nikolai Art Hall, which is a modern exhibit. It's a modern art hall and it is located in an old church that is also well free of charge to get in there. So that was three tips to three experiences on Wednesdays. And the last one is the Danish Glyptothek, which is an well it's it's a combination of an art hall and old collections. It's something you have to experience. There's a great garden in there and there are some great halls and there's even an old Egyptian exhibit and it's free the last Wednesday of each month. So go in there if you are in Copenhagen on the last Wednesday of a month. Of course, I do recommend that if you're not there on the last Wednesday of a month, pay for the admission because it is such an experience to be at the Cryptotheque. All right, but what about it's hot summer? I want to get a dip. Where can I get a dip? You can get a dip down in Copenhagen Harbor. There are several harbor baths along the way. And uh, well, just punch into Google Maps harbor bath and you will get a lot of them. The most known one is on Islandsbrugge or out by something called Fisketol. But along the entire streets, there are several of them. And it is perfectly fine to bathe in the Copenhagen Harbor as long as you do it in the harbor bath, the dedicated area. This is for your safety, so ships don't sail into you. It is also because there are lifeguards there. And the last good reason is that well, if something were to happen to you, it's easier to get help if you are in the harbor bath than if you are out just a random spot on the harbor. Besides that, it's illegal to take a dip outside the harbor bath. And this is some of the experiences. And if you want more experiences, I can warmly recommend my YouTube channel because that is where I go out and explore the different areas that you can visit while in Copenhagen. Moving on to culture and etiquette. Culture and etiquette is so important because when in Rome. So let's start with some of the basics. When you're out in a restaurant, it's okay to tip the waiter if you have gotten exemplary service. But you don't have to, because in Denmark there is a tip calculated into the bill. Besides that, we have some fixed wages that makes it that the staff are actually paid a proper wage and they are not dependent on tips. But if you have gotten great service, I recommend that you leave a tip. I always leave a small tip if I think the service is above what I expect. Because, well, if they go that extra mile, I like to reward them a bit. Another thing is that many tourists find days to be, sometimes they call it rude, sometimes they call it hard to get in on, but Danes are a reservated bunch. They are not as outgoing as in other countries. We are not all that, oh, come in here and we give you a big hug. No, Danes are very sociable with people they know. 
People they don't know, we just have to look at them and see are they someone we like. If they are, then all right, come to us. So if you go to the same Danish bar for five days in a row, you might actually begin to talk to people. Of course, sometimes it's also the first day, but coming to the same bar, you might actually see people beginning to talk to you, coming to the same place several times, and you might see people beginning to talk to you, and you will find that the Danes are just as heartwarm as any other country. We just will take a step back and give you a little more time to get to know us and we can get to know you. So don't think it as rude, think it as a reservation, think it as Danes are more formal in the start. And we can get very informal when you get to know us. And in Denmark we also have a concept called Jandalone. You are not better than anybody else. You are not worse than them either. We are all equal. The younger generation has begun to face it out a bit because it's okay to say, I am good at this. But the older generation, if, if you say, I am good at this, then they will say, no, you're not. No one is better than you. You are better, not better than anyone else. It is going into the background and now it's acceptable to highlight yourself as long as you don't over highlight yourself. No one likes a show it all. So if there's something you're good at, it's okay to say, oh, I'm really good at taking this type of pictures. I'm really good at spotting this kind of birds. I'm a great swimmer. But you should not say, I am a great swimmer. I'm great at this. I'm great at that. I'm great at this. No. Then the Yandlo comes forth again because we are all equal. You are good at your things. I'm good at my things. And let's just leave it at that. And we would much rather hear, what do you find interesting? And one of the best ways to be a respectful visitor in Copenhagen is to respect the distance there are in the start. Respect that I don't call you darling. I don't want to give you a big hug when you come into my restaurant. I don't go all social on you. But that is not because I don't like you, that is because I have my own boundaries. And the Danish boundaries are a bit further out than most people. And that's the Danish way. So don't let yourself be offended by it, but instead see it as, all right, now they're beginning to open up, I'm actually beginning to win their respect. Because it's not that we don't respect you, but we like you to earn the respect before we give it to you. It's a complicated system and the best way is to just be polite and take it easy. That's, well, being polite, that goes all over the world. If you think this is inspiring and you are listening on YouTube, like, if you think this is inspiring and you are watching on YouTube, then hit me up in the comments with your questions and I would like to answer them. If you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, hit me up on my social media and I will answer your questions. It might be that I save the questions to a podcast.